All right. Well, thanks for joining the uh, Password Hub session with Maxime Marais. Max, he's uh, our product owner and team leader on the Password Hub project. So, uh, Max, without further ado, if you're ready, I think we are. So, I'll let you uh, dive into your demo. I'm, I'm going to take a look at the chat. So, if you have any questions, we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Right, Max? Yep. Actually, right. right in the middle, too. Okay, let's get started then. All right, thank you for being here. Um, today we're going to discuss about password of business. Um, I want to do a little, like, what we're going to do today is the first minutes where I'm going to do a little review of uh, why a password manager is important, but I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. We're not going to pass too much time on that. After that, we're going to jump right into a demo. Uh, I want to show the new feature, so I'm taking a big chance here. I'm going to show our staging environment, which is the environment we use to do some tests. So there are some changes that were committed yesterday and merged like this morning into the branch. So hopefully everything works. Uh, but you're going to be able to see the future, uh, what we have in plan and what we will be releasing in the next version. Uh, and after that, we're going to have a little Q&A. Uh, session. And if there are many questions or not a lot of questions, depending on the case, I uh, have also a slide for the future of the future. Uh, so let's get starting. Uh, why a password manager? Well, we as humans are not really good at generating password, right? Um, by default, we tend to create small passwords such as our birthday uh, or friend's birthday or stuff like that. Uh, we tend to reuse passwords all the time because it's simpler for us to remember them. And we tend to use passwords which are predictive, uh, such as one, two, three, four, five, you know. Um, we also uh, are not really good at remembering password. Um, so we have a tendency to forget password and even uh, some companies have a tendency to force us to change password every few months. So all this together, it forces the industry, the businesses to um, add some rules such as a password needs to be 12 character, you have to have an uppercase, a lowercase, you have to have a special character and all those rules makes it even more um, complex for us to remember this password, uh, use password. And um, we have a really hard time remembering them passwords. So that's why a password manager is important. So we can save our passwords, so we can generate passwords which are not small, are not reusable, uh, and we don't reuse them, and are not predictive. Um, with that being said, let's move on to the demonstration. Um, the, the administration, I'm going to do a quick overview of uh, the administration section, um, user, groups, vaults, uh, settings, and permissions. We're going to look at the vault a little bit, and we're going to look at the new RDM integration as a data source. David was talking about that earlier. And uh, in the end, if we have the time, we're going to talk about the new features. Like I said, this is going to be a demonstration of a product that is in staging. This is RDM. Voila. Um, for those of you that are actually using Hub, you might be seeing the fact that I'm currently in a dark mode. Uh, yes, the dark team is coming on the next release. So this is the first uh, big uh, improvement that we have going on right now. Uh, like I said, this is our staging environment. Um, so this is the first view that when you come into Hub as a user, you see uh, your vaults at the top very much here. Uh, for now, I have three vaults that are shared and one user vault, which is my personal vault for business. Um, you can see the list of entries you have here in a tree view with folders. For those of you that currently have a previous version of Hub, it wasn't possible to have folders. Folders are now back, being as we are a data source in RDM. Uh, we have also the dashboard here that's brand new. It's also not in the current release of Hub. Uh, with some interesting uh, statistics about the entry types, the password age, the recent activities that has been going on in this vault, and more statistics. Um, let's go to the administration section. As an administrator, you have access to uh, managing users, you have access to managing groups. Uh, for example, here is a small list of users. Um, you can add a user by the top corner here, or mass invite here, refresh. Um, after that, groups. Uh, you can create groups to simplify permission management. Uh, creating a group allows you to bundle a bunch of users together. So it's really useful. Um, here I click on vaults. Um, we have two types of vault. Um, 
in the uh, the new hub, uh, user vaults and uh, shared vaults. The reason why we have uh, uh, this new section is that a new feature is the ability to restore a user vault as a shared vault. Uh, what does this mean? This means that if, for example, one of your users is leaving your company or you need to uh, delete this user and this user, this user had information that is crucial for your company in its user vault. Um, once you delete this user, you will be able to better, okay, better screen sharing. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Max. But well, I mean, uh, excuse me, Max. It seems like it appears like the quality of the of the screen share isn't top notch. So I don't know if there's anything that can be done at that point. But it seems like the hmm. quality of the screen sharing isn't. And try this. Hopefully, it's better. Uh, I pretty much just zoom on on Hub. I think uh, uh, just uh, I think it could be better actually. Tad fuzzy. And is it better like that when uh, Max is zoomed in? Okay. Uh, now it's okay. Okay, a little bit better. Okay, yeah, we can move on, Max. Sorry okay. about that. Thank you. Um, this is pretty big for me, but all right. Um, so, okay. like I was saying, um, the ability to restore as a shared vault, meaning that you won't lose those uh, entries and you can bring them back as a vault that can be shared to other users, or you can just copy the entry to another vault and move them and reorganize them as you need. Uh, this is Pamal. This is pretty much new. Um, back to the all vaults. I'm gonna. Why no? Not gonna touch that. Uh, this is like the list of vaults with uh, user vaults included. So this is all the vaults in the system right now. We have some shared vaults which are here. The type is over here. Um, so these are the new features that we have currently in uh, the new vault, the new hub. Sorry. Um, some more. Um, I'm just gonna move this somewhere else. Thank you. Uh, some new features that you may be seeing for those of you that are actually using Hub is the, the IP allo list and the CM integration. CM, even for myself, I don't remember what it means. It means security information and event management. Pretty much it's this log where you can put your, uh, you can extract logs from Hub uh, directly into your own system so you can do alerting and uh, event management. This is, this was commented this week. Uh, so pretty, pretty fresh. I haven't even tested it myself. But for those of you that are curious, uh, you will have to enter your server slash IP address, your port, and the type of uh, connection you want to apply protocol. Um, that's pretty much it. You can see that we're missing a label. Um, next, um, IP allo list. Um, this was a feature that many of you actually asked for. Um, you wanted the ability to limit access to your hub from only some specific networks, and this is the perfect feature for it. Um, you will be able to add an IP address or a range of an IP, a range IP. And with that being said, you will be limited to only those IP address. So it's really just a null list. It's not a block list. Um, so the reason why we didn't want to do a block list at first is because uh, it's easy for an hacker to just change his IP address and you have no control over that. Meanwhile, in all list, it's harder for an hacker to just pick an IP which you are actually using or another one. So it's really the all list that we wanted to do first. If you have a concrete uh, work case or a scenario where you believe a block list will be interesting, feel free to reach us and tell us about it. Uh, it's At this point, if we have an all list, the block list is not that much more of an hassle to implement. Uh, so this is also new. Like I said, these two features, oh, no, selecting doesn't work. These two features here are um, really new. Uh, they're not even in production yet. The other three features uh, are here, the system permission. Um, that's a really good question, actually. I do not think we have that option right now. Um, sorry, uh, I was answering to Darko. Uh, the other options here are the classic ones, uh, which we had since V2 for a while. Um, system permission, for example, which allows you to manage um, who has access to what, which groups has access to what, and which users has access to what. Um, such as the permission we have, so creating a vault, managing uh, entry templates. This is a new one. It's also why it's not really translated correctly. Um, I can talk about that once I integrate with RDM. Um, manage password templates, manage system setting, manage users and groups, and view administration logs, which are available here. 
Um, system settings, well, it's pretty similar to what we have in uh, the previous version of UB. There's not much, uh, anything new here. We're going to skip over those. Password template, uh, so that you can have uh, templates. I didn't even create one, sorry. Uh, for your passwords, some uh, businesses use that a lot, and it's a pretty good feature. Um, back to the reports, we didn't put a lot of efforts into the report this time around. Um, except maybe the deleted entries. One of the things that was missing from a uh, previous version was the fact that you can restore an entry that was deleted. Uh, now it's possible, so that's really interesting. And um, what else? That's pretty much it for the new features in terms of uh, the upcoming UB. Uh, we also have a new entry type, which is the, well, new, new for UB, but pretty old for RDM, actually. Uh, the one-time password entry, uh, which will be added, I believe. I have one somewhere here. <clears throat> so that's a one-time password. You can, um, sorry, I'm just going to slack. Uh, <laughs> It's a one-time password entry where you can generate a, a token for a limited amount of time, which will be refreshed here. Um, beside that, I believe we're ready to move to the RDM integration. As you can see, well, now it's a little bit big, but all the entries I have here are in the internal network vault. And if I switch to RDM, um, I don't think I can make this bigger. I'm sorry if the quality isn't up to, uh, to the task, but... Um, here, there's my list of vaults, which are coming from Hub. I will be showing this first. It's pretty small. Maybe this is going to be brighter. But uh, this is my demo hub, which is connected in staging. And we, uh, so everything is uh, set up so that once I connect to my RDM as my default data source and everything, I connect straight to Hub. And these are the same connections that we could see on the web. If I just move this a little bit like that, that's bigger, right? Uh, we can do a quick comparison where the computers are here. I have some other folders here, but it's pretty much the same entries. So it's really a data source. Um, right now, the web version, the web client doesn't support all entries uh, that RDM support. We're going to get there, but we focus on the main ones. Um, so this is for the integration in RDM. You can pretty much uh, play with it, like uh, move an entry and stuff like that. Um, it's I think RDM is easier for you if you want to manage like many entries. It's going to duplicate and stuff like that. It's going to be way easier than the web, but the web is pretty good at managing the rest. Uh, for example, all everything that's in administration, you cannot manage from RDM. Uh, in administration, actually, these buttons at the top here will be linking you back to Hub, uh, the web client. Uh, but for managing sessions and bulk and stuff, it's going to be way easier for you in RDM. Uh, if you have entry types that are not supported on the web yet, um, they will show on the web but they will not be, uh, for example, password lists. You won't be able to edit them for now until we actually support the entry. Um, but you do have a button to open it, actually in it in RDM. Uh, we also have a, added an integration list in RDP. Um, before we didn't have open in RDM, but now we do support it. We also have kept the launcher. So um, that's a new feature that I forgot to mention. Um, we could actually have an issue live, uh, which is that the templates are actually saved by vaults. And we have a fix in staging where templates are actually saved by data source instead, which is what RDM is doing. So this is going to go uh, live in the next release. I'm hoping the next release will be next week. Um, as you can see, we have some small glitches here and there in the web um, so that we're going to fix before we release. But uh, the goal is really to release this uh, really soon, before before December, hopefully. Um, I'm not sure if there are any questions, but that pretty much covers it for RDM integration. Um, for those of you a little bit less familiar with RDM, once you uh, want to create and associate your uh, hub with RDM, you pretty much have to create a new data source here and select the devolution password business. Make sure you select the business one. Uh, you need a RDM Enterprise or uh, Edition to be able to do this. The free one does not support business, will only support a personal. Um, that's pretty much it. We're gonna go to a Q&A. 
let me go back to my slides. Yes, if you have any questions, I can answer them. Um, ranging from pricing, ranging to uh, how it's implemented, security, and stuff like that. I don't see any questions yet. Regarding pricing, we're uh, we're switching from a uh, a monthly subscription, which is which should still be uh, available uh, in the upcoming weeks. Uh, but you're going to be able to uh, subscribe to Hub on the annual basis as well, so you can match your subscription of RDM uh, with the one that you would get with Hub. Um, maybe to talk about the future. Uh, I was uh, had a discussion yesterday with David. Uh, regarding the uh, Devolution Online database that uh, some some of you might be using as a credential store with Remote Desktop Manager, uh, the plan for the futures uh, is actually to replace the Devolution Online database and have people connect their uh, RDM, as you said, as a data source. Uh, well, Hub being a data source for RDM actually, and replace uh, the Devolution Online database uh, in the future. So that's the plan for the. Um, the integration of Hub with RDM. There's a question for you, uh, Max, in the chat, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Um, Andreas is asking uh, an RDM question where, do you have any thoughts on distributing credential to RDM users into their private vaults? Um, that's a tough one to answer, I believe. Um, yeah, that's really hard. What, I'm not sure I understand the question correctly, but um, you want to distribute a credential from a data source hub into a local data source with RDM? Is that what you're, you're trying to do? I'm not sure, but um, pretty much uh, administrator will not be able right now to uh, push an entry into a private vault. What we are currently working on, and that's what you can see at the top here, is the ability to send a message with entries, a little bit like DPS, if you ever use DPS or DS or Devolution Server, or DVLS, I'm sorry. Um, you can send a message with entries and this user will be able to save them in their own private vaults or what we call now user vaults. I'm not sure if that answers the question. I hope so. Okay, well, good, cool. thanks. Any other questions? Yes, good point, Xavier. Uh, there's a hub credential entry also. So from your local RDM, you can create a hub credential entry, which can be also linked to your uh, data source and reference a credential. Well, password hub can uh, also be linked with uh, Devolution Web Login for web entries. And we also have, uh, we just released the uh, personal edition for uh, Password Hub as well. So uh, personal edition is completely free for your personal passwords. Um, don't you, so that, that's a vault to all your personal websites and credentials, nothing to do with uh, your business accounts here. So that's uh, new as well. Uh, we just released it uh, a few weeks ago. So Password Hub is now available in both personal, uh, which is completely free, and business editions for teams and organizations. Yeah, uh, uh, Min, you're right. A personal is limited to one user. Actually, a personal is kind of like your own uh, user vault uh, from a business where only you have access to it. And unpersonal is really geared toward your own personal stuff at home. Uh, or if you're like a single worker, uh, stuff like yeah. that, but it's not uh, shared. You cannot share with uh, other people in the app personal. Hans brings a, another good point. The, uh, there's also uh, desktop apps and mobile apps available for both personal and business editions. Yep, good. Um, so I'm going to move on with, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask at any time. But uh, what's coming next? So I already thought I'll uh, talk about uh, sending message, uh, where uh, you will be able to send message with entries via hub so that the user will receive the entries. It's going to be a copy of the entry. Uh, we'll be able to save the entry somewhere. Uh, we also have a PowerShell module, which is a work in progress currently. Um, we're looking to release that probably next year at the start of next year. Uh, we have uh, something in mind, and this is something that um, 
we would like uh, your opinion on, but we're thinking of adding a soft vault limit. What I mean by that is that uh, once you reach a certain threshold, we're going to warn you that um, performance will be uh, will be like degraded at this point uh, due to the fact that the encryption is all local. So, um, for example, if you reach, I don't know, I'm just going to throw a number here, like 2,000 entries, uh, we, you will have a warning in your vault saying that performance will be impacted because you have too many entries. Um, the goal is really to kind of limit uh, people from just importing 10,000 entries into a vault and then asking why it's slow. Uh, obviously, because the encryption is all done on the client side, on the server, the only information that's available in terms of entries, it's the name of the entry, so that we can do a multi-vault search. Um, we have to decrypt everything, and decryption is a fairly slow process. Uh, so that's why we're thinking of adding soft limit. I mean, soft by the fact that they're not going to be enforced, uh, but it will be a warning that will be shown to you. Uh, like Max also said, we're moving on from a monthly uh, to yearly subscription model, a little bit like how you uh, buy RDM and how you renew RDM and everything uh, with RDM. And of course, uh, we have, uh, we're working on a better integration with RDM. We're still finding some quirks here and there uh, that we're fixing, and we want to support more entries also on the web. And uh, all this is, it's not written, but in, there's also the same thing that can be said to the uh, app uh, version of UB, so the password UB app. Um, it's also going to follow all the same features. Um, finally, one thing that's not written here, but I know that it's uh, something important for those of you that are going to move from DODB, uh, Devolution Online Database, to UB. Uh, it's the offline mode. We are looking into uh, strategies of how it can be implemented probably for next year. Uh, so that's something that stay tuned. It's not written there, but stay tuned for that too. Might be it to say, Max, that uh, password ob is uh, SUC2 compliant. Uh, we received the certification last year. So in yep. terms of encryption security around the uh, the access of the platform, uh, where our team, our security team worked. Uh, very hard to uh, get that certification. So uh, hub is suck to compliant. Uh, you are going to have to create a devotion account to access your password hub to uh, access both personal and business editions. Yeah, on that, I can add a little note that's not written there, but uh, we have something plan for the future with the PowerShell module, we don't want you to log into your devolution account every time. Uh, so what we have planned is something that we call application users, a little bit like DPS once again. Uh, you, will be able to, you will be able to create a user uh, which is not linked to um, a devolution account. And this user will only be able to use tools such as the PowerShell module uh, to automate your tasks. That way you can create a subset of permission on this user which he can, for example, just create an entry on this vault, and then you can have your script uh, push your like new RDP or new Windows machine directly into UB with the PowerShell module. So that's something that's coming too. We have a question, Max, from Darko. Uh, we use LastPass in company. Password of business can be a replacement? Yeah, well... That's one of the goals, of course, that the password up can be a uh, direct replacement of LastPass. Yeah. Uh, we also, I believe, support uh, sessions in a better way than LastPass. But uh, right mm -hmm. now, for me personally, the goal is really to ramp up to RDM so that we have yeah. the same level of features. And once that is done, I believe we can try to uh, compare more mm -hmm. to the other uh, password management solutions. Well, the, the whole point and the, the main goal for Password Hub is to have a replacement for these uh, mainstream password management platforms, LastPass, OnePass, OnePassword, Dashlane. Uh, we've built an import tool from these, uh, these password management solutions to the hub so that if you're using Remote Desktop Manager, it becomes a no-brainer to use Password Hub with the level of integration that we want to get in the future. Uh, that really is the big, I would say, spin-off for this year uh, overhaul regarding the Password Hub product is to, uh, we've started targeting password management solutions, and now we want to make sure that this uh, password uh, tool is fully integrated in RDM so that if you're looking for a, uh, a full SaaS a cloud-based secure uh, credential repository in Remote Desktop Manager, you can go ahead and link it to the Password Hub. 
so that, as I said uh, at the beginning of, of the conference, so that all the different tools all integrate with each other, so that if you're using one of these tools, it's it becomes quite a no-brainer to say, all right, I'll take a look at the hub uh, for a much better integrated password management solution than I would get with LastPass or KeePass or Keeper. I were still, uh, David, uh, in, in his session, talked about competition. We're still looking to integrate these password managers as well in Remote Desktop Manager. It's just a matter of since we control both solutions with the hub and the RDM, we can better control the integration and offer a really complete 360 uh, full coverage product for password management on the cloud. And, and it's the same it's same kind of uh, thinking when you take a look at the, the web login for uh, website entries uh, the personal version, personal edition as well that we just released so that people can actually use one tool because that's something that we see a lot in the uh, in the cybersecurity market. People, and it's called at uh, Ignite, we talked about vendor fatigue. People in SMBs really need to find ways to uh, get all their, uh, their, their tools or their security platforms or whatever in, uh, in, in smaller, fewer vendors because there's a lot of uh, offering on the market. Uh, but it's getting tougher and tougher to integrate all these solutions all together. So, um, for S especially for SMBs, uh, it's uh, people are looking to mainstream and you know uh, it decrease the number of vendors in their environment, uh, and that's exactly where where uh, where devolutions comes into play in terms of password management, PAM, MSPs, and RDM. So we have a, one last question, Max. I don't know yeah, if you can see from Dominic. Yeah, I believe we have to actually. Um, so yeah, that's one advantage where uh, you can share entries with other people without having them install RDM because they can use the web client, they can use the mobile app, uh, they can even lose the launcher if you believe they have to do some remote connection uh, without having RDM installed. So yes, it's definitely one of the positive of uh, Hub as a data source. And the other question is, do Password Hub have um, option to share safe data with external user? Now for some users who don't use nothing, we use 1T, I don't know what that is, uh, for share. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question, but uh, external users, I'm guessing you mean somebody that's not registered into your hub right now, we have nothing uh, like that. It could be an interesting feature and I believe we already have a request for that uh, where we can send some sort of link or uh, something within with the data. I believe there's a feature in RDM and probably Max or David can correct me on this, but uh, where you can send uh, an entry with uh, the credentials and everything encrypted as a small file that self, uh, can be a self-open. Yeah, it is one-time message, which is oh, okay. destroyed after first view, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I believe DPS just got a request for that, so we will take a look into it. Yep. Well, Max, uh, it's all the time that we have. Thanks for your time today. I know it's uh, it's not easy to do these sessions. You did great. I mean, Thank uh, thanks for a very generous, uh, very generous presentation.